first reading is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 43, beginning at the first verse. But now thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burnt, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. I gave Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my eyes and honoured, and I love you. I give men in return for you, peoples in exchange for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west, I will gather you. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel is written in the third chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the 15th verse. As the people were in expectation and all men questioned in their hearts concerning John, whether perhaps he were the Christ, John answered them all, I baptise you with water. But he who is mightier than I is coming, the thong of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptised, and when Jesus also had been baptised and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus in bodily form as a dove, and a voice came from heaven, Thou art my beloved Son, with thee I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. to my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. We've been celebrating the joyful season of Christmas and now celebrating Epiphany, the appearing to God the, of, of people, God with his people. And uh, 
we uh, have that wonderful reading from the Old Testament from Isaiah. But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. These words of Isaiah, as Isaiah hears God saying as he looks forward to the people coming home after a time of, um, of many years of slavery and insecurity and poverty, seeing people coming back, seeing people gathering again, seeing people building forward with new hope. Fear not, he hears God saying, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. That sense of the Lord who created you, created by God, created in the beginning, out of nothing, made by God, and then formed by God. He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel. That sense of being not only created in the beginning, but being formed by God throughout our lives. God helping us and moulding us and standing alongside us, helping us to become who we are. Created by God, formed by God, and then redeemed by God. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. Rescued from evil, protected from the worst of what can happen, and then called by God. I have called you by name. You are mine. Called by God by name, and then again and again held in that relationship. I have called you by name. You are mine. These words that Isaiah hears being said to the people of Israel, we can take as being said to us today as we continue to celebrate and give thanks for the incarnation of Christ, God amongst us in Jesus Christ. We cannot doubt and need not doubt in God's love and protection. And Isaiah heard the Lord saying, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burnt and the flame shall not consume you. There's that sense of uh, um, not everything's going to be perfect, that there will be difficult times when you pass through the waters, when you pass through the rivers, when you walk through fire. That sense that there will be problems, there will be even disasters that we have to find our way through. And yet, God will be with us. Promises spoken in Isaiah chapter 43 gave assurance and comfort when the people were uncertain. They'd been living in exile as slaves. They'd been driven away from their homes. They don't particularly know what's next. They've been waiting for many years. And of course, they would have been living with anxiety and disappointment. But then that glimmer of hope as the people started to come back again to their homeland. Their words of hope and comfort to a people who might have felt that everything had gone wrong for them and yet had held on to and were finding perhaps again some faith that God had not abandoned them. God does not just view them as a group. He doesn't just address the whole nation, but their, their words, he knows each one by name. And of course there's huge comfort to us in believing that God cares enough to know our names. God knows the names of each and every one. We believe in the uniqueness and the sanctity of each individual life, each person known by God. And God comforts these people and promises them as they come out of exile, they will come back home. There's a journey ahead and God promises to be with them, even when you pass through waters, even when you have to walk through fire. God isn't promising that they will avoid hardship or difficult times, but there are that sense in which God's presence is with them and God will carry them through. We think of ourselves and the journeys that we've all had to make through our lives and over these past few months, and the very fact that we're here now is evidence of God's love and care for us. I think, I hope we can all look back and describe moments when we've experienced God's special protection. Even so, we might think, well, in a sense, it's all right for God, um, who is all-powerful. But then, of course, we have the understanding of God revealed to us 
in Jesus Christ. The reality of that human life begun in weakness and ending in weakness, ending on the cross. We know that God knows what human life is like. God knows what it's like when things can't get any worse. And yet there's that amazing Christian understanding that God has drawn into himself that experience of living as a human being, suffering a cruel death, but then life prevailing, a new life beginning. This is the God who says to us, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. God says, Isaiah is God saying, because you are precious in my eyes and honoured, I love you. Fear not, I am with you. Words to people who've gone through hardship, but have a sense of confidence in better times ahead under the blessing of God. And that may be where we are now. It's certainly the case that that's how people around Jesus felt at the time of his baptism. Uh, when Jesus came to John, people would come to John and John was saying, there's someone greater than I who's coming, whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. And Jesus came to be baptised by John at the start of his public ministry. That wouldn't have been an easy choice for him. It would have been a lot easier just to live and work in the carpenter's shop where he was relatively secure and stable. But he's willing to leave that behind to follow God's call. And we have this saying, fear not, coming through again and again, coming through the Isaiah reading and the Gospel reading and indeed through the Bible. That reassurance that God knows us and cares for us is with us in our joys and in our uncertainties. There was the baptism of John for the forgiveness of sins, to wipe the slate clean, to prepare people to meet with Jesus. But then Jesus himself comes to be baptised by John. And we can understand that baptism of Jesus by John as being beyond simply the forgiveness of sins, although that's big enough. But it's about that oneness of God with humanity. Jesus comes to John as a human being. And then Luke tells us the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus in bodily form as a dove. And a voice came from heaven to reassure Jesus, to say to Jesus, fear not, to say, Thou art my beloved Son, with thee I am well pleased. The baptism of Jesus, of course, a major turning point in his life and the beginning of his public ministry. And here's this turning point, John the Baptist calling people to prepare to meet with God. And Jesus knew that he was caught up in this and that he would have a profoundly crucial role to play at his baptism John the Baptist and the people, they see Jesus coming up out of the water and the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove and they hear the voice of God the Father. Thou art my beloved Son, with thee I am well pleased. A voice of reassurance to Jesus but also a voice for the people to hear to point them towards Jesus, the one who would make the connection for them between themselves and God himself. Jesus was baptised, we believe, by immersion, going under the water and then coming up out into that new beginning. And there's a sense in which we can take the metaphor, Jesus sought to be immersed in the life of God as he immersed himself in the life of the world to save the world. Baptism celebrates our commitment to God, but also God's commitment to us. As we see in Jesus, baptism is not just about being immersed in water, but about affirming the reality of being immersed in the presence of God. Something, actually, that is a one-off experience for all of us at our baptism, but then can become a daily experience if we seek it, being immersed in the presence of God. It's a prayer by David Adam to start each day. I am immersed in the light of God the Father. I am immersed in the love of God the Son. I am immersed in the leading of the Spirit. I am immersed in the three in one. 
we can all of us seek to be immersed in the love of God and know that we have God's care and protection upon us and indeed upon our world. pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, and to live our for thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. To Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory, and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now, and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Mm -hmm.